I have shown several smartphones, from cheap smartphones to smartphones with the best specifications and technology, to help you choose the ideal smartphone for you. But today, we'll see the specifications of a smartphone with a lot of potential. But first, subscribe to the channel, because I bring new products every week. But let's see the specifications of this smartphone from Realme. It has a LCD screen with 6.7 inches at 90 Hz and resolution of 720 by 1600 pixels with a ratio of 20 to 9. It has a Unisoc processor with 8 cores and an Army Mali graphics processor. It can have a storage capacity up to 256 GB and 8 GB of memory. The main camera is 32 megapixels that records video in 1080p with slow motion of 60 frames per second and with HDR technology. The front camera is 5 megapixels and records video in 720p. It has the connectivity 4G, Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5, GPS, but it doesn't have NFC. It also has a USB 2.0 Type-C connection for charging the battery and transferring files to the computer. To unlock, there is a fingerprint reader on the power button and has facial recognition. It has a 5000 mAh battery with 10 W charging but it doesn't have wireless charging. The screen has tempered glass protection against scratches and drops. It is built with plastic, IP64 certified for water and dust resistance, and weighs 185 grams. You can put two nano SIM cards for communication and a micro SD to expand the storage. This is a smartphone with basic technology and minimum specifications, so it's cheap, but it's not the most versatile smartphone you can choose. I don't recommend this smartphone for professionals, but for the normal user, it's a smartphone that will be enough. Smartphones have become the most important device in our lives, due to their versatility, convenience and communication capabilities. But with so many different smartphone models, it can be difficult to choose which smartphone you should buy, because you have to consider several features, the screen size, amount of memory, processor speed, camera resolution, connectivity, or the sensors it has. But I will explain all these features to you, so you know how to choose a new smartphone. About the screen. You can choose the size of the screen, either it has a cutout for the front camera, the resolution, the refresh rate and the type of screen, because it may have more vibrant colors. I recommend an OLED screen with 6.7 inches with 120 Hz. About the processor. The processor is very important, because the faster it is, the faster the smartphone will work and the smoother your interaction will be. A processor can have multiple cores, speeds and an integrated graphics processor which is very important for gaming. I recommend that it have a MediaTek or Snapdragon processor with at least 6 cores at 2.4 GHz. About the structure, a smartphone can be made with different materials, plastic, metal or glass. It can also have a coating to be more resistant to impacts or scratches. And it can be waterproof and dustproof. I recommend that it is made of aluminium for better cooling, with Gorilla Glass protection to protect the screen from scratches and IP67 certification against dust and water. The RAM memory is the memory that all applications will be running when you use your smartphone. So, if you normally have many apps open, you have to have a lot of memory. And you can choose from 4GB to 24GB. I recommend 
that you choose with at least 8 gigabytes. But if you play games on your smartphone, you may need more. The internal storage is for storing all files, applications and operating system. A smartphone can have between 64 GB and 1 TB of capacity. I recommend choosing a smartphone with at least 128 GB, but if you record videos and take a lot of photos, you should choose with 256 GB. But if you have a lot of files and movies on your smartphone, you may need even more capacity. The smartphone normally has two types of cameras, the rear camera and the front camera. The rear camera is the main one, with higher quality and can have four different cameras. A camera can have a very large sensor for better imaging, better sensitivity at night, take photos up to 50 megapixels and record in 8K. I recommend that you choose a camera that records videos in at least 1080p and captures photos in 12 megapixels. The front camera will normally be for you to make video calls, but it can take a lot or little space on the screen. It can have 32 megapixels and record 4K video, but for video calls, a 720p camera is enough. About the smartphone security, so that only you can unlock the smartphone, you can use a password, a fingerprint reader that detects your finger, or facial recognition that detects your face. I recommend that it has at least a fingerprint reader, but it's up to you if you prefer other protection systems. With smartphones becoming thinner and thinner, some connections are no longer existing. But a smartphone can have an audio and USB connection. I recommend a smartphone with a USB Type-C connection for power charging and copying files to the computer. But if you need to connect headphones or a wired sound system, it must also have an audio connection. About wireless connectivity, the smartphone is connected to the internet using mobile data or Wi-Fi. Currently, 4G and 5G are the most common, but 6G will be the next generation. To connect to Wi-Fi, you can have Wi-Fi 5 with speeds of 3 gigabits or Wi-Fi 6 with 9 gigabits and Bluetooth for communicating with nearby devices. I recommend that you choose a smartphone with 5G communication, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. But a smartphone can also allow compatibility with other cards because a smartphone can have two SIM cards for mobile communication, but you can also put a micro SD card to expand the storage capacity. The smartphone has at least one nano SIM card But if you need to expand the storage, you can also put a micro SD card. The larger the battery capacity, the longer your smartphone will last before you have to charge the battery again. The battery can last between one day and one week. This will depend on how you use your smartphone. Either you keep the screen turned on for a long time, if you are using the Wi-Fi, or if you record a lot of videos and photos. A battery typically has a capacity of between 4,000 and 6,000 mAh. I recommend with at least 5,000 mAh, but the higher capacity, the better. Charging the battery can be done in two ways, wired or wireless. Wired charging can be between 10 watts and 240 watts. The higher the power, the faster will charge, being able to charge your smartphone in 15 minutes. Wireless charging can be done between 5 watts and 50 watts. I recommend that you have at least 20 watts of charging, which will charge the smartphone in 40 minutes. On smartphones with Android systems, 
you should choose the last version available because the latest version will allow you to make updates for a longer time, such as security updates, installing new features, compatibility with applications, or updating to a new version. That's why I recommend that you buy a smartphone with the latest version available of the operating system. And these are the main specifications and technology that you should take in consideration to choose the ideal smartphone for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped explain the specifications of a smartphone to choose the best smartphone for you. But now, subscribe to the channel because I bring new products every week, like the video to help the channel grow and if you have any questions, write in the comments.